presentation of Fox Sports. We are Fox. We are St. Louis. This is St. Louis Cardinals baseball. This afternoon, it's a beautiful day in the Gateway City. Game two between the Chicago Cubs and the St. Louis Cardinals. Welcome to Day Baseball on your home of the Cardinals, Fox Sports Midwest. That's the Mad Hungarian Abrabowski. My name is Dan McLaughlin. And here in game two, after a long night, over four hours of baseball in game one, Cardinals try to bounce back. And it's a good thing they got Adam Wainwright. He is their ace. He goes deep into ball games, and you're going to need that because you don't have a lot of arms available in that bullpen. Adam, for whatever reason, struggles against the Cubs, particularly here at Bush Stadium. And surprisingly, Villanueva has pitched very well against St. Louis. Carlos Villanueva has been in the bullpen. He's been in the rotation last year and again already this season for Chicago. The bats need to pick it up. In particular, Alan Craig. He's in the lineup today. Baseball is coming up. TV. That's what they're seeing over here at Bush Stadium as well. Over to Ballpark Village. Pat Paris, what do you have?
We remind you that baseball is brought to you by Budweiser. Great times are winning. Grab some buds. It's Chevy Truck Month. Visit your Mid-America Chevy dealers to take advantage of Truck Month offers on the all-new Chevy Silverado. And by Menards. Save big money at Menards on all your home improvement needs. If you haven't stopped in yet, make sure you do it. The Budweiser Brew House and Ballpark Village. As the umpires are on the scene, calling the balls and strikes today, Mike Estabrook, Jerry Lane, the crew chief at first, Hunter Wendelstad at second, and Gabe Morales is down at third. The Chicago Cubs take game one of this series last night in extra innings. The Cardinals try to bounce back, and they'll do it with Adam Wainwright on the mound. love how he sprints from the dugout to warm up and that happens every inning a look at the Cubs lineup Junior Lake his first start in this series Luis Valbuena then Anthony Rizzo Nate Sherholtz Ryan Sweeney Starlin Castro Darwin Barney 8 for 26 against Wayno John Baker and the pitcher batting ninth Carlos Villanueva against the St. Louis ace Two starts so far for Adam Wainwright, our Kia starter. He is one and one, and he's pitched very well. He's pitched outstanding baseball. He's only gotten two runs of support. That was fine on opening day. We picked up his career 100th victory and winning one to nothing, but then he dropped one. His second start, three to two, as he only went out there and was hurt by a couple two out doubles. The 6 7 right hander Adam Wainwright will face Junior Lake, who's in left field and leading things off today. The Cardinals defensively around the horn brought to you by Dobbs Tired Auto Centers. It's been a porous defense so far. Holiday, Jay, and Craig in the outfield. We highlight Matt Adams, three airs in just 74 games at first base last year. Wong's at second, Descalso. Uh, started short. Matt Carpenter at third. Yachty is behind the plate. Adam eight and six with a 4-2-4 four ERA against Chicago, but really struggled at home. He's just two and six with a 4.8 ERA here at Bush Stadium. First pitch to Junior Lake is driven out to deep left. One pitch, one nothing. Trying to get ahead, and he got uh, the Cubs ahead. Junior Lake really came on in the second half last year and became a very good offensive force. And 67 hits, that was second most among National League rookies after the All-Star break. The Chevy Fox Tracks. The one nothing lead. Junior Lake, his first of, or rather second of the season. He had six home runs a year ago, and he knew it. First home run that Adam has allowed this year. Luis Valbuena. A lot of lefties in the lineup for Rick Renteria. And that's a fly ball out to deep right. Alan Craig is over. Makes the catch for out number one. The fly ball pitcher right now is Adam Wainwright. That's a little surprising. Not surprising is how well he pitched here at Bush Stadium last year on Saturdays. Had the alternate jersey last year, and he was brilliant as he was 5 0 with two complete shutouts, a 0 0.23 ERA, and five starts at home on Saturdays last season. One out. Here's Anthony Rizzo. First pitch is taken just a bit low. Rizzo off to a good start, 333. One home run, six RBIs. Led the team in home runs last year with 23. As a matter of fact, that jersey is featured on the Cardinals' championship rings. First year of the alternate jersey a season ago. It's on one of the sides 
of the rings that were handed out today. Bill DeWitt, the third team president for the Cardinals, and really the architect of those rings. He and his committee do an outstanding job, and what a nice little gesture having that uh, the jersey on the side of the ring. The shift was on. A couple of hops, Colt Long, and he makes the play. Talk about that shift with the left hand hitting Pizzo on there. You see Colton Wong out there in short right field, the shortstop almost behind the bag. And then this ball is hit right up normal second base positioning, but a long run for Colton Wong and a very unorthodox throw, and he gets his man. Nate Shear holds a four hit night in game one. Four for five, a double RBI. First four hit game in his two seasons with Chicago. Looks at strike one. Swinging one of the hotter bats in this lineup. He's hit safely in five of his last eight. Quiet guy, but a good player. 0 1 pitch with the Giants two seasons ago. They defeated the Cardinals at the NLCS and then went on to win the World Series. So those home runs get your attention last year 21 in his first eight seasons part time player with the Giants at a total of 24 big breaking ball drops in for strike two last year Adam felt like he got cutter happy going too many of the cutters he tried to work on a sinker more in spring training still has the signature curveball and the cutter is a pitch he's still trying to kind of perfect but not wanting to use it as much. Outfield is straight away. Shallow and left. John Jay getting a start in center. Familiar spot for him. Sheerholtz also drove in 68 last year to go along with those 21 homers. The curveball is taken high and it runs the count full. Adam only walked 34 batters all of last season. His walk total is up. Six walks in his first 14 plus innings. But part of that is by design. Big, big crowd. Every fan receiving a replica ring here today. It's not limited. It's every fan. So that, this place is packed. And Dan, that's a good point because we go so many other, all the other ballparks, and they'll have 15, 20, 25,000 giveaway items. But uh, the Cardinals do it right, taking care of every fan. Chopped foul. Tomorrow it's the Wainwright Molina Gold Glove Awards. Those will be handed out to those two individuals and also the fans will take home the replica and still some seats available. Another 3 2 pitch from Wainwright. A strikeout. His first of the afternoon. Wainwright in search of career win number 101 in regular season play. The Cardinals have to play catch up thanks to Junior Lake in his solo shot.
field. Wearing the number that was worn by Sammy Sosa for so many years, 21. And he's made it a 1 0 game with a leadoff homer, and the Cardinals' leadoff man is Matt Carpenter. That surprise you that the Cubs haven't retired that number? Not necessarily retired because they're not issued. Yeah, but issued is a bit surprising to me. Carpenter, Wong, and Holiday, Adams, Molina, and Craig, then Jay Descalso and Wainwright. Good numbers with three home runs and the five hits against Villanueva for Matt Holiday. Nueva has three decisions in the first six games for the Cubs. Talk about how he's got one of those rubber arms and no ego. Doesn't mind going to the bullpen, whatever the team needs. And that's what happened. He took a loss out of the bullpen. And he's one and two already this season. 0 1 pitch to Carpenter. Make it 0 2. Remember, he issued on opening day the extra inning home run. To the first batter he faced, Neil Walker. And then he had another appearance in the in relief, lost that ball game, and finally got a start, and he won that one. But probably not much more than five inning pitcher. The Cardinals off to a two and two start here at Bush Stadium. They have an overall home record of 387 and 265. If you add it up, it's a winning percentage near 600. Since this ballpark opened up back in 2006, not hitting just 212 as a team. Cardinals are 10 games above 500 at this ballpark against Chicago, 40 and 30. Last night, Carpenter one for three with an RBI. Redbirds only seven hits last night. And a strikeout of Carpenter as Baker holds on, and that's how we started offensively for St. Louis. Look at the defense around the horn. Brought to you by Dobbs Tire and Auto Centers, Lake, Sweeney, and Shearholds in the outfield. Balbuena, Castro on the left side of the infield, Barney and Rizzo on the right side. Five errors for Anthony Rizzo. Nearly a full season last year, and John Baker is behind the plate. Here's Colton Wong. Cubs making some news before the game with their bullpen situation. Jose Barris is no longer their closer as Wong turns on it, pulls it foul. Jose Barris, two blown saves and two save opportunities, and it's his lack of control that. Very concerning for the Cubs and Rick Renteria right now. Three and two thirds and seven walks. Also has hit three men. He had two last night. Had a wild pitch as well. Cardinals are very fortunate to take that game into extra innings and a frustrating loss, but today's a new day. Chicago also optioned their right hander, Brian Schlitter, to Iowa and Chris Rusin. Is a third lefty added to their pen. That happened before today's game. He was called up from Iowa. Wong pops it out. Baker throws the mask and against the screen he makes the catch. Baker, their backup catcher, and while he's catching, the Cubs are two and zero oh with an ERA of 2.50. So he's done a nice job with the staff. As he does a nice job with this foul pop up right up against the screen. Baker, the non roster invitee, and he makes the club. This holiday takes a pitch low, and we saw Wellington Castillo. What a great job he did, both defensively and then with the game winning home run. No doubt. Three run home run. Speaking of home runs, Matt's hit three home runs off this pitcher. If you go back to the beginning of 2011, Cardinals left fielder with 11 home runs against the Cubs. The 2 0 pitch. 
Now you just saw me in the way, but hesitate as he delivered to the plate. We see that all the time from Adam Wainwright, and that's what this right hander will do. He'll also try to quick pitch you. Been doing that an awful lot to start this year. Just try to show something different. Sometimes you get a little tricky and you trick yourself. And do those things are fine, but always make sure you have command of your pitches. Three and one to count. Holiday still searching for that first home run, as well as Matt Adams and Alan Gray. Hits it sharply to third. Balbuena is there. And a one, two, three inning for Carlos Villanueva. After one here at Bush. One nothing Cubbies. And Ron, let's check in with Jim Hayes for the first time this afternoon. And Jim, big news with GM John Mozalock. Yeah, John Mozalock received an extension that will take him through 2018. He's been with the Cards 19 years. He told me when he first got into baseball, it was kind of tough to climb the ladder because he did not come from the background of being a player. He said that's changed over the years. Now there's more people in baseball that view it through the lens of it being a business, and that helped open the door. For guys like him, but Dan, there's no arguing with John Mazalock's success. No doubt about it. Teams GM the last six years. In that time, four postseason runs, won a world title in 2011, NL champions last year, and twice. And this is what you're talking about: the full scope of the business. The club has been Baseball America's Organization of the Year, 2011. Last year, they're producing players at a high rate so to me Al it's uh, pretty much a no brainer it really is and you know he's at the helm right there but I think when you look at uh, Bill DeWitt Junior all the way on down this this is the best run operation I think the ownership group is the best in baseball fiscally responsible and yet put a great product out on the field and keep on reinvesting the money that fans have through the turnstiles a strikeout here of center fielder Ryan Sweeney up and away. Chase that ball up there that going to produce a lot of swing and misses. Here's Starlin Castro. He burst onto the scene a couple years ago and had over 200 hits. At 207 in 2011. Last year it dipped to 163. They're really trying to keep him engaged. For lack of a better term, interested. They signed him to a long term extension. Believe he is a cornerstone for this franchise. There was a point last year where 
you know, the Cubs really kind of maybe even second guessing themselves a little bit. Sign Castro and Rizzo to be part of their, as you say, cornerstones of their rebuilding process. They both took a step backwards, but they're back on track and maybe more dangerous than ever now. 1 1 lifted into left center for a base hit. Castro hustling out of the box. But he'll stop at first base. One out single. There's no doubt he has a wealth of talent and should be an outstanding two way player. Sometimes his offense will affect his defense, but there's a lot of hits, and, and that bat is still a very young player. And this sky may be the limit for him. Emilio Bonifacio sitting today, but leading the league in hits, fourth and average. Darwin Barney with good numbers against Wainwright, as we noted earlier, getting the start. Barney last year hit just 208, but what keeps him around is a great glove. Only seven airs the past two years. And two seasons ago, he won the gold glove in second. You see the 308 bang average with a home run against Adam. And the curveball is lifted out to left. Holiday is back, and he makes the catch on the track. Castro back to the bag at first, and there's two down. Adam threw that little breaking ball, kind of hung up a little bit, but. Matt Holiday went back on that ball very casually. He knew he was going to catch it. There's the hanging breaking ball. And look, he just kind of glides back there and makes the catch easily. And it brings in Baker. Broke camp with the Cubs for the fourth time in his career. Done that with the Marlins in San Diego twice with Miami. Non roster invitee to spring. And at 14 games, he hit 258. They wanted a veteran behind the plate as a backup, and they get it in John Baker. Round ball that's hit to second. Colt Long. The Cubs strand a runner. Their first of the afternoon. It's Adams, Molina, and Craig when we come back. Stadium in a packed house, and let's turn to the Toyota keys to the game with Al. Well, you know, Adam Wainwright has to go deep in this game. That's no problem for him. He led the National League in innings pitch last year because you kind of wonder how many of those arms were available in the bullpen. The big three out of the bullpen all threw at least 20 pitches yesterday. It was a tough 
loss last night. Put it aside. Today's a new day. Just come out here, win this ball game, and put that uh, loss in the rearview mirror. Love that remote camera taking us to different parts of the ballpark and ballpark village. It's gotten cloudy here in St. Louis. We expect rain tomorrow. Hopefully, no delay. We've had enough of those. Here's Matt Adams off to a good start, hitting 378. No home runs, one RBI. Balbuena way off the line at third, near short. Castro near the bag at second. Adams pulls it foul. Left side of the infield, they want to put a shift on, but they're not quite sure. I'm totally convinced, are they? I'm not either. I'm not sure that's the right way to approach Matt Adams with the way that he's been taking that pitch the other way. There's a picture that was in the post dispatch recently from the 40s as Adams hits it out to right. And it's gone. Solo home run. A laser shot. His first of the season. We're tied up 1 1. I don't think the shift helped that one. As that ball, the only question was would it have enough height to get out of the ballpark? And it just does. So his first home run of the year. Remember, he hit. 17 last year in limited play. And we all kind of wonder what's going to happen if he gets 500, 600 at bats. He's off to a great start, and we tie this game. Strike one on Yadier Molina. Key point in the game last night, and that was our Nissan drive of the game, was Molina. After eight straight balls, first pitch was swinging away. Mike Matheny did not use a bunt in that spot. And in the case of Trevor Rosenthal, later in the game, hitting for himself with the potential winning run at second base. Matheny said if it didn't get to a bases loaded situation or a first and third with one out, he had already made up his mind that Rosenthal would go back out for a second inning. Part of that reasoning was he only threw six pitches. Little tapper. And a base hit for Yachty. Rosenthal went through six pitches to get through his aim to work, so he felt he had plenty in the tank, and his best option is sending back out there. It just didn't work. Swinging bunt does work for Molina. Had to have the greatest speed, but he's hustled on this ball to do a die play for Alboina, and he comes up empty. Try and catch that in the palm of your hand and let it kind of roll down to your fingertips when you're getting in position to throw it. Craig is hitting 088. No home runs, three RBIs. Very slow start. And last season, slow start, eight for 38. What are you seeing right now with Alec Craig? Well, his timing's off a little bit. They've been getting in on him, been jamming him an awful lot. Remember, he wants to take the ball up the middle. Good location there, you know. Everyone well aware of what an offensive force he is, and you're getting pitched awfully tight. That's just a perfect pitcher's pitch there. But it's, it's all said and done, Alan Craig's numbers will be there. He's just too good of a hitter, and he's hit at every level. Mentioned uh, before the home run, the picture in the post dispatch from the 40s. If you're wondering if they shifted back then, not often. Pretty rare, but it did happen. They actually shifted the Cardinals did against Ted Williams.
One one pitch to Craig. That's a base hit in the right. Well the way that uh, things have been going for Alan Craig that ball almost hit Yadier Molina. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. Instead of getting a little you know bad luck as Yadi does a good job to jump over that ball. It goes on through and Alan Craig can start building on a positive day. Also the one thing there is they were pitching him away and that's you know he's so good going there. They've been getting him out by jamming him. Here is John Jay. Hitting 182 no home runs pair of RBIs short lead at second for Molina still nobody out. And strike one. Inning started with a line drive home run into right for Adams. Molina an infield hit base hit to right for Craig. A one pitch to John Jay. Popped foul and out of play. I'm three for 12 off this pitcher with an RBI and a walk. In his career, he has hit Chicago very well. 325. Yeah. Lack of at bats. Your timing is a little bit off, and he just missed that last one. Bring up a good point. John Jay now in the role of coming off the bench, trying to stay sharp. Something that's not easy to do for a player that's used to playing every day. The check swing and a strikeout of Jay. The second strikeout for Villanueva. Scalzo looking for his first hit. Part of a double switch last night. Took over it short. Because he got a couple bats last night, probably a little better. Making the adjustments for this one, but only 10 in bats on the young season. Good play by Baker. Ball game started on the first pitch from Wayne Wright to Junior Lake. Lead off home run into the seats and left. And the only other time that Adam Wainwright has allowed a home run on the leadoff batter at Bush Stadium was Ichiro Suzuki. That was in 2010. And at that time, Ichiro, member of Seattle, now with the Yankees. As the ball gets away, runners advancing, throw to second, save, and Descalso comes through with his first hit to make it two to one. Time Ryan Sweeney was noted for a very good throwing arm. So here Yachty out at second base. Takes off run, gonna come on home. And here he just kind of throws it in. And a kind of little casual right there with Rizzo and gets the ball away. The Cardinals take advantage and both runners move up another base. Infield in for Adam Wainwright. Does have a hit this season. Great chance to help his own cause here. He's one for four so far. Being a wave already at 32 pitches. One out runners at second and third. 
Big gap in left center. Outfield is awfully shallow. Squeeze. The safety squeeze. And I'm kind of looking down at Alan Craig going. Wasn't sure, but safety squeeze, and that's what it was all the way. As the runner has the option, if the bunt gets down and it's well placed, then you can have the possibility of coming coming on home. Suicide squeeze, you have to get the bunt down and the runners bl run blindly. Down is 0 and 2. Wainwright base hit the left. One run is in. Descalso is held up at third, and on an 0 2 pitch, he makes it 3 to 1. Well, we know Adam Wainwright can help his own cause. Such a good athlete, usually makes contact, so you really. Thought that was going to be a pretty good position where if you get that run in, gets the extra benefit of the base hit on top of it. Little surprise, Okendo, who is so aggressive, didn't send Descalzo. He's running hard, but gets the stop sign. I'll be honest with you, Al. Junior Lake is noted as having a cannon for an arm. Well, he used to be a third baseman and infielder and stuff, but. Uh, you know, usually when you ask Okendo about outfield arms, he says, I don't care. Yeah. I'm going to challenge everybody. Good but arm or not. He did show respect there for Junior Lake's throwing arm. Play center. He's in left today. Runners at the corners now for Carpenter. Another aspect of this, too, is that you do have an RBI man at the plate. Very much so. Carpenter just had a phenomenal offensive year last year and 78 RBIs. And. What was it, about 68 of those came as a as a leadoff batter. That's right. Carpenter struck out first time up. Cardinals have collected five hits here in the second. One ball and one strike. Another one of those doubles. Remember last year, Carpenter hit 55 doubles, break the Cardinal record. 53 of Stan Musial. And 55 led all of baseball. Carpenter, little flair, long way to go. This may drop. Foul ball. Great effort, but a foul ball as Castro nearly came up with it. From a Cubs perspective, you may catch a break because with him diving like that, Descalso back to the bag at third. He's tagging up. He would have scored easily. No doubt he would have scored easily, but I think all Cub fans are excited just to see that all out effort from Castro. Talked about it sometimes defensively, becomes disinterested, but uh, he showed a lot of hustle right there. Went after that game. ball, just came up, uh, not being able to get, hold on to it. But as you said, would have, Cardinals would have had another run if you would have caught it. The one two. Carpenter puts it in play. That'll drive home a run. May have a base hit. He is safe at first. Beat it out. The uh, sixth hit this inning for the Cardinals, and it's four to one. How about that effort from Castro? Did everything he could. Strong throw over there. Bang, bang play. Another RBI for. Carpenter and the Cardinals now have the 4 1 lead. Just a well placed swinging bunt. And nothing going right for the Cubs right now. The second infield hit for the Cardinals in this inning as Carpenter drives in his fifth. And it's runners at first and second. With Colt Long at the plate. And Wong hits a fly ball out to deep right center. Sweeney with room and he'll make the catch. Wainwright tags up from second to third. And the ninth man to come to the plate is Matt Holliday here in the second inning. 
Time now for you to tweet your photo using the hashtag STLFanPhoto for a chance to have it shown. And it's brought to you by AT&T. A real cause of concern for the Cubs coming into this game today. The innings being logged by their bullpen. They needed Villanueva to at least give them five, maybe six, if not longer. It's one of the reasons why they made the move to call up a lefty. That was prior to today's game. Now Adam Wainwright, you know, you could expect him to go seven or more. Villanueva pretty much more is that five or six inning pitcher. And Cubs have played a lot of extra inning games already. Last night was the Cardinals' first extra inning game. Oh, one pitch. Holiday. Deep short. Castro. Long throw. Nice play. Cardinals strand two, but they pick up six hits, a lead, and four runs. What a moment that we had prior to our official first pitch of the game from Adam Wainwright. Ceremonial first pitch. That is Leslie Reitenauer. She thinks she's here because it's her birthday. She has not seen her husband in a year. And look at the daughter's reaction. Awesome. 22 years he's been in the Navy. He's been stationed in Pakistan. And he is home and a chance to reunite with his family. You never get sick of seeing that. What a surprise that is. And we thank him for his service. And they also, their eldest son is in the Navy. While well, we have a moment, Cardinals are thinking today about a special fan, Kylie Burnett. She's gone through an awful lot. Kylie is watching today and we're thinking about you and want to see you at the ballpark very soon. The strike to Villanueva. We're underway here in the third. Big news today here at the ballpark. John Mosellock extended with his deal to remain in St. Louis. He has been a part of just about every facet of this organization. He's run the draft. He's run the minor leagues. He's now the general manager of the team. There's a strikeout of being away, but that's three today. What, 19 years in the Cardinal organization? And he's only 45, so I mean, moved up the ranks very quickly and now noted as one of the best 
GMs in all of baseball. Well, the Cardinals have been to the World Series three times in the last eight years while ranking 11th in payroll. And it's a World Series team a year ago that many believe now is better than the team that we saw in October. Better defensively, more speed, and they have lowered payroll. Here's a 1 0 pitch. It was earlier in the at bat, Wainwright telling Matt Carpenter be ready for the bat. The bunt. He doesn't miss much, does he? You know that's part of his game, and you know just by showing that little reminder to your defensive guy, it also tells the batter, "Hey, you aren't going to fool me." And then he put it right back to him. Look at Joe Kelly showing off that uh, pennant. You have a chance to get that Friday, April 25th, courtesy of the Pasta House of Coca-Cola, Cardinals.com/promotions. It's a three by five pennant flag. This will be pitch number eight of the inning as Valbuena takes strike one. Valbuena is at third base again. He flied out to right first time up. Really a stopgap for guys like Javier Baez, Chris Bryant. Top prospects for the Cubs and in all the baseball. There's a sharp breaking ball there. Cubs are starting to stockpile those position players. Their system still a little weak on pitching. Here's the 0 2. Fly ball to center. Jay is back, 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 and he makes the catch up against the wall. Valbuena is 0 for 2. Long way to go, and also fight the sun in center field is John Jay. Midway through three, four one St. Louis. Live look into Ballpark Village. And Adams hits one out to left. On the first pitch, Junior Lake went away. Adams with his first home run back in the second part of a full run inning. Reminder that baseball is brought to you by ATT, Rethink Possible, and by Schnooks. Been watching the Masters.
so I guess you haven't. I haven't. Love too, the Mavs. Too busy. Oh, I know. You're too busy. The huh? azaleas in blue. It's a do or die play for Valbuena, the third baseman, with Yachty up first time and wound up being an infield hit for the Cardinals catcher. 3 0. Different feel at the ballpark here for game number two after the way that it finished up last night. That was a tough loss. Well, the only thing the Cardinals need to do is start scoring some runs, get a little breathing room. They have the right man on the mound today when you have a, a limited bullpen. Adam is so good at taking his responsibility. Yanni, left center. This is trouble, and that ball will get down. Molina is two for two. Got he already three home runs and kind of sees kind of off the plate looking for the ball in the inner half and he gets it up there. He's got underneath it a little bit, but still one hop away from the warning track out in left center. Alan Craig. See if he's really on his way back. If he doesn't, uh, if he drives in Yachty, you know, he's starting to make his progress. Alec Craig with a base hit to right field. Last two years, this was automatic, wasn't it? He drive him in. 450. Last two years with runners in scoring position. The previous at bat, they pitched him away, but we've seen more times than not. A lot of pitchers so far, first couple of weeks, trying to bust him in. And not surprising, too, you know, with nobody, you know, when you get a situation, you, you can pitch away, but now with a runner in scoring position, you're going to kind of go back tight. Pitch on the inner part of the plate. One ball, one strike. First 10 games, the Cardinals. We thought it would even out, but not to this extent. Now they were just so remarkable last year. 330 team batting average and led by Alan Craig with his 450 plus. This year it's early. Reds trailing again. They are also a team. Search of offense. Top of the eighth, one nothing Tampa Bay. A tough schedule, but Trying to hold on until they get some of their reinforcements back. And Chapman would be the one who first comes to mind. 2 1 popped up. Rizzo over near the Cardinals dugout. And it's out of play. Don't get much help if you're the visiting player. You go over to the Cardinal dugout. Two and two the count. Inning started with a fly out of the first pitch by Adams. A double to left center by Molina. He's two for two. And a two two pitch to Alan Craig. Yachty is running. And Castro to his left takes the hit away and an RBI. Molina advancing on the play. And it's up to John Jay. And he felt like he had that big jump. No one was paying attention to him, so he could scoot on over. Once again, Castro makes a nice play up the middle. Spins, throws, and saves a run. Swung on for strike one. Jay struck out on a breaking ball, could hold up his swing for strike three, and that was back in the second inning. Villanueva uh, has two K's today, Jay and Carpenter.
Cardinals seem very comfortable in the batter's box today. Hit by three pitches yesterday. You always wonder if that'll carry over to the next day. As Jay hits it up the middle, Castro diving stop. Throws to first. Save. It's another infield hit. Yeah, we can't have an appeal or challenge on that one. RBI for Jay, his third. And that makes it five to one. Great effort by Starlin Castro. Renicky is going to come out and talk to crew chief Jerry Lane. Made What's that interesting call. here is that the ballparks can show the replays for the fans here at the stadium, and all the players right now are looking up at the video board. The Cubs have challenged before. They had the first challenge ever in a play that was not overturned. Let's take a look here. So the this naked eye, I thought he was out. This is what we talked about, though, last night. When is the ball in his glove? The rule is when it's in the back of the glove and it hits the leather. So we will have a challenge here. And again, we haven't had any from the St. Louis side of what has to happen. The crew chief gets involved. And this will go back to the war room, if you will, at Chelsea, New York, the command center that Major League Baseball has poured billions into. And on that play, they have already been looking at it. And it's an umpire back in New York that's looking at it. And a crew. It's one of their official stops. So the call on the play, safe at first. And you can have confirmed, inconclusive, or overturned. And this is potentially the third out of an inning. So right. the fielders have to stay out on the field. Out. And it's a great play by Starlin Castro. The Cubs then will keep a challenge. So a hit and an RBI taken away from John Jay. The play that is overturned. Castro saves the run and the out at first. FoxSportsMidwest.com for all your Cardinals coverage, feature stories, video, and more. Follow the Cardinals at FoxSportsMidwest.com. Here's Anthony Rizzo. And a fastball from Wainwright is a strike. So the challenge takes the hit and RBI away from Jay. 
keeps it a 4 1 lead. And the Cubs maintain their challenge. On average, coming into play last night, it had been taking two minutes and 15 seconds. That was a lot quicker. The goal is 90 seconds. One of the uh, aspects that you have to remember, too, is that the umpire is being challenged on uh, his call. And to make this work, Joe Torrey said it was imperative to have umpires on the other end, meaning that the person that they're talking to in New York is a fellow umpire that has been at this level. Hanging breaking ball and a base hit beats the ship for Anthony Rizzo. And I think we both feel that he was out and play was correct. You also bring up that good point we talked about last night is you can see the ball going in the glove, but you can't really tell when it hits the back of the glove and is really the final out. Very tough to tell on some of these plays. But you're, you're absolutely right, too. And Joe Torre is right that if there wasn't an umpire at the other end making that decision, the umpires on the field would not, uh, they wouldn't go along with it. That is foul. Well, they, they feel that they're talking to one of their peers, and that's big for them. And I think it's, it's big of the of umpires to understand that the goal is to try and get plays right. Now you are a human being. You've got a fraction of a second to make a call, and some of them are going to go your way. Some of them are go against you. But if they get corrected by another umpire, it's better for the game. Here's the one. This is the big initiative by Major League Baseball, which is replay. They discuss that more in the offseason than steroids or biogenesis, A Rod. It was replay and collisions. One ball, one strike on Sherolds. Cardinals turned two double plays last night. a lot on his sinker try to get away from being so cutter happy but with all these left handed bats in there he really likes to throw that cutter here's a 2 1 lined in the left center field over to cut it off is Jay throw comes in to second offline and standing up Sherholtz with a double and the tying run will come to the plate. Another ball out away from him, and Churl's going with the pitch. John Jay has to cut that ball off, gets it back in quickly. A little bit offline, so it's a double, but it does save a run. Matt Carpenter is on the grass down at third. Runners at second and third. Nobody out for the Cubbies here at the top of the fourth. Sweeney struck out his first time up. Remember, he was leading the Cubs in hitting close to 300 before he crashed into a wall in late June. Some wonder if he has recovered from that still. Outfield is straight away. Breaking ball. One ball, one strike. Good one there. Adams curveball has been a little inconsistent in the early going. So used to seeing it as one of the absolute best in the game today. One one pitch. A pickoff down to third, and they almost got him. It's Anthony Rizzo down there, the runner at third base. Yachty's never afraid to throw, 
and you aren't going to stray. You see, this is a plan. Threw that ball in the outer half. Carpenter was moving as that play was coming to the plate, trying to get in position for the pickoff. Strike two. The two two is hit out of play. Cubs jumped out to a one nothing lead if you've just joined us. First pitch of the game junior link with a home run into the seats and left. Cardinals answered with a full run bottom of the second highlighted by the Matt Adams solo shot to tie it up. And it's three and two. I paint that fastball down the way just a little bit wide. Doesn't come back with the curveball here. The curveball and he got him. The strikeout for today for Wainwright. Well, occasionally we will pick up uh, obscenities from the players. A frustrating moment for them. We just did that and uh, we apologize. It's our field mics down there. So Sweeney is 0 for 2 with a pair of strikeouts. And I think we got the fact he wasn't happy with his at bat. And it brings in Starlin Castro. He's made some very good plays today defensively. Castro really has played a good game defensively to this point. Already has a base hit here too. Wind is whipping right now here at the ballpark and blowing out to left. Ground ball that's hit to short to Scalzo across the diamond. Run does score and that makes it four to two. RBI number eight for Starlin Castro. MLB.tv Premium. It's the number one live streaming sports service. And they're celebrating 12 years. Join the millions of subscribers and watch every out of market game live online or in true HD on over 400 mobile and connected devices. Visit Cardinals.com for details. Don't always have to get a base hit to score a run. Adam needs to strand that runner at third base now, though. Darwin Barney hit one to the track and left. It was caught by Holiday, and he's 0 for 1. Two. Cardinals had a good outing last night. Joe Kelly. It's an air by Wong and then back to back hits. He was lifted. Pitch count was low at that time. The Cardinals used some of their big guns in that game. Segrist and Martinez and Rosenthal. Joe again, second time out. Good job. He was asked if he thought about starting a reliever in that seventh inning. And he said, no, Joe had pitched very well up to that point. Pitch count was in the 70s. And it sure caved in in the seventh inning. Still has never completed a seventh inning in any of his starts. Two and two.
three and two. Sure, Adam wanted that pitch right there. Down away, might have been a little bit wide, but one of the previous pitch as well. Tough to take those. They shade Darwin Barney into right field. Three two pitch. Spoil. In his career against uh, the Chicago Cubs. I find it very surprising two at six at home with an ERA near five and you know Adam just saying some of his best baseball pitching here is the the leading winner pitching at Bush Stadium three. Three two. I wasn't lying. Our, our field mics, they pick up everything. If they're not broken. <laughs> Put a glove on that mic. Right. Ouch. It's another 3 2 pitch. Got him. And a strikeout of Darwin Barney. Two in the inning, five this afternoon. There were three 3 2 pitches to Darwin Barney. Couldn't catch up. 4 2 St. Louis. For the fourth here at Bush Stadium. Reminder that April 26th, 25,000 fans, 21 and older, will take home a replica Yadier Molina alternate jersey. The Central Division Champions logo on it is presented by Lumiere Casino. Yadi likes it, holding it up. That's April 26th for the Molina jersey. Sure, shot of a young lady with uh, ice cream. Lucky you weren't in vicinity. Probably about three or four years old. You would have taken that ice cream from her. I don't think there's any doubt. <laughs> Be tough on a kid, Al. It's got to have my scoops. Even a time last year where you were feeding me ice cream on camera. True. Ted Drew's action. Absolutely. There's a 2 0 pitch to Descalso. And a fly ball lifted into deep right center field. This ball will get down. One hops off the wall. And Descalso. Two for two. 
with an RBI. Nice going, Daniel. His first two hits of the season. What a valuable guy he has become. Utility player that really is one of the premier utility players in the game today. Play the infield positions. Come off the bat, off the bench, provide a little pop, and now getting a chance to start this ball game. And a good start with two hits already. You could get the the bottom of the order to start chipping in and be really easy to score runs for the Cardinals. Wainwright bunting and strike one. Rizzo almost down there shaking hands with Adam. Want to bunt it down the third baseline. See where first baseman Rizzo's in your pitcher right there. Bueno back trying to make a play, have a play on the Descalzo. Strike two. Well, on an 0 2 pitch, Wainwright singled, picked up an RBI back in the second inning. I would have been surprised if they would have done the Butcher Boy. Now show bunt, then pull the last second, pull the bat back, and then chop down on the ball. I'm not sure that Rizzo is real comfortable thinking that the bunt is still on. The 0 2 gets it down. Rizzo to third. Late. Discalso is in there. That throw, Rizzo throws it low and in the dirt, and Valbuena does the right thing. He has to make sure he catches it. And can't apply the tag. It looked like it took a little extra time instead of, you know, coming over the top. He throws sidearm, slings the ball, and that low trajectory. You see, Balbuena does everything he can to make sure he catches it, and then apply the tag, and it's too late. Carpenter with an infield hit his first time. The Cardinals a chance at a big inning here with runners at the corners. Nobody out. Matt is one for two. Last night it was Jeff Sabarja. Did not issue a walk. He had 78 last year. That was seventh most in the major leagues. The Cubs pitchers issued 540 walks most in the National League. Third in baseball last year. They cut down on those. But right now they're concerned with Matt Carpenter and how much further they can go along with Villanueva if it ended, a big inning hits here. It's when the Cardinal offense can be so dangerous when you get some production from the bottom end of the order and then you roll it over to the top. And then you have all these guys that are very comfortable driving in runs and you see right here the success. Matt's had against this Cub starter. One oh pitch. Carpenter lines it into center field. That ball will get down. The Scalzo can walk on home. It's five to two, St. Louis. Two RBIs for. Carpenter today, his total is up to six. Cardinals pile on. Five two down. Ball down at the bottom of the strike zone. Look at how he used his wrist. Just flicked that ball and line drive out to shallow right field. Wainwright advancing to second base. Runners at first and second for Colton Wong. He has popped out and flied out. Showing bunt and it scoots away. The runners will advance to second and third. You can see where Carpenter read that perfectly, but had to make sure that Wainwright saw it as well. Now you could get in trouble right there if you're not paying attention to lead run. The breaking ball right at the back foot of a left-handed hitter gets away from a lot of catchers. 
Baker tried to smother that, but it got underneath the glove. And now the golden opportunity for the Cardinals. Up the middle, base hit off the glove of Barney. One run is in. And Carpenter held up at third as Colton Wong comes through. So good with the glove, and that ball just had enough to scoot off by. You see, kind of playing in a little depth, and that cuts down the range for the second baseman, and it gets underneath the glove of Barney. He's making a good effort, but it was well placed. The Cardinals pick up their sixth run. Holiday has had two hard hit balls, but nothing to show for it. Rounded out sharply to third in the first. Rounded out with two runners on in the second. Deep in the hole and short. And he's 0 for 2. Got a lefty up in their bullpen. I'm sure it's their newcomer. Russell. Just recalled today from AAA. He's been starting down there, but he can start or relieve. Holiday hits it down the left field line. It's hooking and foul. And a fan now with a broken hand. There's Russin. Just called up. One ball, one strike. You got to wonder at this point if being the wave is out of gas. 68 pitches. Uh, in my mind, he's kind of like one of those guys that uh, his start, his one start, he did go five innings, but I don't see him going much more than that. Runner does go from first to second. That's Wong, and it's a stolen base. Playing back on the ball and kind of really late covering, but he's got to kind of hold his ground and make sure that Holiday doesn't uh, hit a line drive right up the middle. And with that, the infield is brought in. I hope the life insurance is paid up on these infielders. Hit to third, a play at the plate, and save! Carpenter slides in there safely! Mike Estabrook right there perfectly to see that ball. That, that is part of the collision aspect that's been added to the rules now where you have to give the runner a lane. Well, I think that ball, that play was developing so quickly. And you're right. You know, Albuena goes home. You have to give him a lane, but he, there he has to make sure he catches it. So it's up the first base line giving the Foul territory lane for Carpenter to come in. Estabrook, the home plate umpire, in perfect position and sees that foot touch right before the tag. Six RBIs now for Matt Holiday. Still nobody out. They've already called to the bullpen. And runners at the corners for Adams. And that'll be all for being a wave up. Matt Carpenter led the league and run scored. He took a chance and paid off. 7 2. St. Louis.
McDonald's restaurants in St. Louis are offering a free small McCafe coffee during breakfast hours now through April 13th. No purchase necessary. This is our Chevy call to the pen. One of three lefties. Chris Rusin, 27 year old out of Detroit. The uh, Cubs sent Brian Schlitter to Iowa, their AAA affiliate. And by the way, they're playing Memphis this weekend. Memphis had their opener last night, and the right hander was sent down, and this lefty brought up. And he'll welcome Matt Adams to the plate. I think if they brought up the left hander just because they're playing the Cardinals and the Cardinals problems. Started the season in Iowa 0 and 2 with a 650 ERA and two starts. But he allowed just two earned runs in six innings in his most recent start April 8th at Nashville. Fourth round draft pick in 2009. Runners the at the corners for Adams. You know an interesting question is that you had a pitching change there. What if Rick Renteria wanted to take that time to have a better look at the play which would then give him four or five minutes to review and potentially challenge that's kept in front the rule is this if there was no change once the pitcher is on the rubber and the batter is in the batter's box you cannot challenge that your time is up and in this particular case once Rusin starts to warm up your time to challenge is effectively over I would think just common sense would say you would have to make the challenge first and then you make your pitching change afterwards. Correct. one one is skied Rusin made uh, 20 starts at the big league level for the Cubs. 13 of those were last year, where he was 2 and 6 ERA, just under 4. And then in 2012, he made the other 7. So, being a wave of pitching into the fourth, cannot record it out. So, three plus innings, 10 hits. And he's responsible for runners at first and third. And here's Yadier Molina, who's two for two. Runner goes. And Holiday has a stolen base. Got a great jump on this lefty. Didn't pay any attention to him. The Cardinals took advantage of it. This is a little more indicative of the Cardinal offense. Infield is drawn in for Yadier Molina in a 7 2 game. Two balls and no strikes, and out to visit goes John Baker. That first base open, you saw him catch her Baker when he's running out to the mound, turn around and just to check and see who is on deck. You got Yadi, who's two for two today, swinging the hot bat, and the struggling Alan Craig on deck. Be one of those rare times somebody would want to pitch to Alan Craig. So an intentional walk to Molina to set up a potential double play and a force in any bag. Third time that Molina will have reached base. Alan Craig, first time up, single to right. A ball that almost hit Molina, who was the runner at first. And he also grounded out to short. So a chance to really put this game out of reach potentially with a big inning. Well, you understand why the Cubs are doing this, but some clubs may be able to take advantage of Alan Craig right now, but it won't last long. Cardinals are 5 for 12 with runners in scoring position today. Big leap forward, isn't it? So one out, base is loaded. Ball one to Alan Craig. Really concentrating on the release point. 
kind of holds it out there. Gives you a good look, but there's a little hesitation and then a snap throw. The 1 0. Two balls and no strikes. Well, you just brought up trying to make an impression. Got Adams to pop up with nobody out. Runners at first and third. Then the intention to walk to Molina after falling behind. That one grand slam was last year late against Cincinnati. Two and one. And right now for Rick Renteria, he needs innings from this lefty. Remember, he's been starting at Triple A, so with all the extra inning games the Cubs have been in, and the guy that should be able to provide those in and form. The 2 1. John Jay on deck. Nice and easy, Allen. All the pressures on the pitcher. Three one pitch. Still has to throw another strike. Cold Wong, Matt Holiday, Yadier Molina, all aboard for St. Louis. Base is loaded. Cardinals on top seven to two as we play here in the home half of the fourth. Three two pitch. A strikeout of Craig. Up to John Jay struck out on a check swing back in the second inning. Then in the third with two outs and a runner at third. Starlin Castro made a great play to his left. Initially Jay was ruled safe. Cubs challenged the play won the challenge call was overturned. There's a base hit out to left with two outs. Here comes Holiday. Throw by Lake is off the mark. Nine to two Cardinals and an opposite field. Base hit by John Jay to bring in two. Excellent piece of hitting by John Jay right there. Nice and easy. I noticed right before that John Jay in his career hit 269 against left handed pitching. I find that kind of surprising. But here you see the success. Four for four with two doubles off this young left hander. What a reason. He sees the ball well. Throws that one middle middle and John Jay keeps his hands inside and just shoots that ball out to left field. And there even with that supposed strong throwing arm Matt Holiday scored from second. And here is Descalso with runners at first and second. He started the inning with a double that landed on the track in right center. So the tenth man to come to the dish is the Cardinals bat around here in the fourth. Popped up. Third baseman wants it Valbuena. Cardinals strand two but this is more like it. An 11 hit attack for Mike Matheny's club and they lead it nine to two with their ace on the mound.
as Adam Wainwright has had an interesting day to say the least. First pitch of this game to Junior Lake deposited in the seats in left field. You're thinking, uh oh, could be one of those kind of days. One pitch, one nothing. But then the Cardinals behind Wainwright came storming back. We know he can field his position, the gold lever from a year ago. That was on an 0-2 pitch, got the bunt down, led to a big inning for the Cardinals after the Descalso double just moments ago. Now it's John Baker. You know, Mike Matheny knows that everybody likes to manage along with him, and so we can do that up here. One of the things I think that you think about, you get concerned about the innings total of the last two years for Adam Wainwright. If he cruises and you feel comfortable, and if the Cardinals add on to a 9 2 lead, you know, at times you try to buy an inning or two here or there, and then you also can rest those big guns out in the bullpen and maybe give Manus or Butler or some of those kind of guys a chance to come in and. At least work in a game and try to stay sharp. Well, Adam needs to go deep into this ball game, and then, like you said, there's some innings out there for the bullpen. You rest the big, big three, like we're talking about, Segrist, Martinez, and Rosenthal. And quite uh, simply, that if you have any of anybody in your bullpen that you don't trust a seven-run lead to, they shouldn't be here. Here's the 0 1. See Wainwright, first base side dominant for the pitching rubber. And that's because of left handed batters. He wanted to be a little bit more efficient with them. And he feels by getting on that side of the rubber, he's able to do that. There's a breaking ball, and he went. A strikeout of the pitcher, Chris Russett. Two down, and that's six K's this afternoon for Adam Wainwright. America's new sports network is the place to turn before every grand slam, every goal, every game. America's pregame only on Fox Sports 1. The top of the lineup at Junior Lake. And him out there, he's got that big lead, but he really knows how to pitch with a big lead and attacking the strike zone. It's the uh, Cardinals team store over at Ballpark Village. They are just a split second behind us. Thank you. The volume that's up over there. And inside Ballpark Village, a live look. The re uh, retractable roof is open over there. If you didn't know, they had a retractable roof. And there's a strikeout of Junior Lake. Seven today for Adam Wainwright, who is through five.
Two hours prior to every home game, enjoy the games, the prizes, and free North Star ice creams. That's at the Ford Plaza, presented by Prairie Farms. That area right there is where home plate used to be at the old Bush Stadium. Footprint of the old uh, infield at Bush Stadium. Adam Wainwright leads it off as we move to the bottom of five. Adam. Wainwright at the top of the lineup. Adam Wainwright has won a Bush Stadium three record 53 games with a 2.67 ERA. And if he wins this ball game, he will tie Matt Morris, Larry Jackson, and Max Lanier for 10th place on the Cardinals all time win list with 101. Tampa Bay holds on. They defeat Cincinnati one to nothing as Wainwright pops it up. Anthony Rizzo calling for it. One away. I believe they're sitting right around that uh, ballpark footprint, right? They are. The field. Right, yeah, they're right in the middle of it. A lot of families come out there. Kids run around the bases, different things. So they're just sitting there, and that's a free ticket. And a fly ball lifted out to left. Junior Lake over and makes the catch near the line. Battling the sun all the way. So Carpenter. Two for four with a couple of RBIs, and it brings in Colton Wong. As Russell has picked up two outs on three pitches here in the fifth. Wong with an RBI single back of the fourth inning. Also scored, stole a base, and he's one for three. Well, if you're this left hander, it's a chance to make an impression for Chicago. Last two years, he's made 20 starts at the big league level, so they know what he has and what he possesses. But you're right, he can come out there and try and fight for a spot in the rotation or at least fight a spot on the pitching staff. If he could go the rest of this game or deep in this game and not utilize any more bullpen arms, he'll be doing his job. Two and two, the count with two outs. Mike Matheny jotting down notes in a book that he keeps every game. Situations, things that arise that he feels he may forget, that goes over that book with the coaching staff after every game. How they want to approach their own players. Situations that the uh, the ball game it's something he has done since day one. Tony Larusa and Dave Duncan were so prepared, so I think Mike has learned a few tricks from it. But why not do that when things are still fresh in your memory? Still learn and come up with new ideas. 3-2 is hit out to right. Shear holds on the move and makes the catch on the run. Nice play from the Cubs right fielder. We're through five here at Bush Stadium. 9-2 St. Louis.
Edwin Jackson, who was part of the Cardinals championship in 2011 against Michael Walker. And Michael Walker is second career start, third appearance against Chicago. There's the gold glove winners from a year ago. Their day tomorrow, right? They'll receive the gold gloves of uh, 2013 and the fans give away too. Nine to two Cardinals. There's a strike at the knees to Luis Valbuena and we're underway here in the sixth inning. These two know each other so well. Yadier Molina, Adam Wainwright. Part of so many great moments too over the last decade or so. No. Adam missed all of 2011 with the Tommy John. These two guys have been together for a lot of innings. One some squatting and one pitching. Adam also talking about the gold gloves picks up his second. And Yachty his sixth. Adam is six foot seven, big guy, keeps himself in great shape. The O2. I kind of like it when people were talking about all the innings he pitched last year and he led the major leagues. And then you add the postseason over 275 innings. Spring training over 300. 300. And but he said, I'm a big guy. You know, it goes that workload doesn't bother me. However, he was telling me the other day that he did change up his offseason routine. First time a little different this year. Later, grabbing a baseball and beginning a throwing program, and was very uh, cautious during spring training with the innings and the workload. I think. Uh, you know, as you go along, and especially when you go to the World Series, you're playing that extra month. You do alter your off-season workout. The 2-2 over Adams and down into the corner for Luis Valbuena. So a leadoff double to start the six for Chicago. First hit of the day. How about Wainwright Molina? Most innings together. The active pitcher and catcher combos. Hamels and Ruiz. And Verlander. Avila of Detroit. Hamels and Ruiz of the Phillies. Here's Anthony Rizzo. Wainwright was telling me that this is a team that he loves. He said this is a good group of guys. A lot of it stemming from the fact that they have been together. Majority of these players last couple of years and not a lot of turnover. And he said Scott Moore. Who was with the Cardinals in spring training was shocked to hear the pitchers talking about. Tipping pitches and what they do. And he said, I, I just haven't been around a club, Scott Moore saying this, where the pitchers get together and talk like that. Talk about how they're tipping and what they're doing in their bullpens. He said it just floored them. And Wainwright said, that's commonplace here. Watching each other's bullpens. Watching video of each other. Trying to figure out any kind of way to help each other. Now this is not a reflection of Scott Moore, but the first thought would come to me that most of the clubs he's been on have been losing clubs. Most recent was Houston, I believe. Yeah. And you know, Scott Moore did make an impression in spring training too. He's a nice insurance policy. Play several different positions. Shift is on here for Rizzo, and the 0-2 is hit to the right side, charging Colt Wong and advancing on the play. Valbuena to third. Also in that conversation with Wainwright, I said, "All these great moments you have had. I'm assuming that." The strikeout of Beltron in 2006, maybe your finest moment, closing out a World Series. And he said, he said, that's not the case. He said, what has been interesting for him is the fact that uh, in wrapping up the series last year with Pittsburgh, 
He said going the distance in game five was arguably his finest moment. And I said, wait a minute. Hold on here. No way. You've got to look at the Beltron moment. He said, well, I'm going to have to quote Tony La Russa. It's one and one A. <laughs> Tied for first. There's a base hit into right center. RBI for Sheerholtz. But his point was that the Pirates had given him fits over the years. He said, even when the Pirates were not the team that we see today, for whatever reason, he said, I, I just struggled against them. He said, I take great pride in being able to go the distance in games and to do that against Pittsburgh, for him personally, meant an awful lot. What a game that was. Well, I think it's also a reflection of how much he wants to every year and get better and better and better. You know, the World Series was great and close that out. And that's you know so many young kids dreams. But then to send your team to the World Series with a complete game. Every was second in the Cy Young balloting. A couple of years ago he finished with more first place votes than anybody else but finished third. I think we're looking at a guy in a way that's kind of remade himself over the years too. He's running into trouble here. That's a base hit into right center. Drives in Sheerholtz. Throwing to second base, not in time. And Ryan Sweeney with the RBI double. That's three doubles this inning. Derek Lilliquist out to visit. They may get the bullpen up and throwing. It's now a 9 4 lead for St. Louis. I don't remember Adam's struggles against Pittsburgh, but I do remember his struggles against the Cubs. And I think if you remember, he missed. 2011 and then he started the home opener in 2012 and just got crushed by the Cubs. So I think there's a little revenge factor with a lot of different teams. Anything you can do to motivate you. you know, people do it in different ways but Adam has such a strong constitution. What a great deal on Cardinals tickets fill up at Phillips 66 eight gallons or more now until September 19th. Receive up to 50% off on a pair of tickets to a Cardinals home game. For more information, visit cardinals.com slash Phillips 66. All three of the doubles this inning room come against left-handed hitters. Starlin Castro. Oh, one swing of the bat, he could make this interesting. There's a curveball, a broken bat. Carpenter makes the play to his left. That play to his left, fairly routine, but I would say this Matt Carpenter, I think, has opened up some eyes just how well he has played defensively. He's had some great plays down there. All we do is his natural position, but I agree with you. He has made some dazzling plays right there. Kendo worked so hard with him last year, converting him to a second baseman. Sweeney stayed put in second base. Go back to that last play. It's to the left of Carpenter. So watch Descalzo, the shortstop. He's reacting if you get there, but then he follows and goes over to third base. As the throw goes across, if the runner at second wanted to advance, Descalzo was the only man that could get there, and he was was there. There's another broken bat. Darwin Barney at the plate. Barney sent one to the track and left. It was caught by Holiday. That was in the second inning. Then he saw three consecutive 3 2 pitches and eventually struck out swinging in the fourth. How many broken bats have we had in this series? Awful lot, huh? The 1 1 pitch. Popped up. Who wants it? It's Descalso. Cubs pick up two. Cut into the lead. It's 9 to 4.
in some ways not to have had that baseball bias coming in because you can look at all aspects and, and not sort of be preconditioned to think one thing or the other. And, uh, you know, when, when I brought Jeff Luno in uh, underneath the baseball operation, I think that was an asset he had. So uh, it's worked well for, for Mo. And, you know, he, he's a quick study, learned it, learned it well. And uh, Walt gave him a lot of leeway as an assistant GM. He negotiated a lot of contracts. So he was ready for the job. Earlier today, Bill DeWitt with Jim Hayes on the pregame show and the news that John Bozalock, Cardinals GM, two-year contract extension with the team that will keep him through the 2018 season. One of the things that Bo has been able to do is stagger contracts too. So as these younger players come up for arbitration or free agency, it's not like you're having a situation of four or five of those guys and then you're stuck. Who do you pick? And when they've made a long-term investment into players, it's been the right ones. It's been Holiday and Wainwright, Molina. They locked up their core players. Holiday shoots it fair down the right field line. A double for Matt Holiday. All of a sudden, the doubles for both sides are coming out. But, you know, you look at uh, talking about the payroll flexibility. You know, he staggered those contracts. And now, with so many young players coming up through the farm system and becoming core players, you're actually. You know, fielding a team that we think is better than last year's National League Championship team, and it's, you have a lower payroll. Now it's Adams. Tie the game up at one with a solo home run, his first of the season, 374 feet back in the second. He's flied out to left and then popped out. Russin, this was the first man that he saw in relief of Villanueva back in the fourth. A one pitch. Rounded foul. Villanueva pitched into the fourth, did not record an out. Gave up ten hits and nine runs today. Sees that breaking ball coming from a left hander, the more he's going to lay off the, the good ones that are down in the way, be in position to pull the trigger on the hanger. Just don't see that many in the minor leagues of this ball. Two and two. Michael Walker going tomorrow for the Cardinals and what a one two punch. The top of the rotation for St. Louis with Wainwright and Walker. Joe Kelly has been effective. Lynn has had a couple of outings in which he's given up runs but kept the team in the game. Same with Shelby Miller. Adams bounces it to Darwin Barney. Advancing the runner, that's Holiday to third. And with one out, it's a chance for Yadier Molina, who's been on base three times today. Again, you can tweet your photos. Hashtag STL fan photo. That's brought to you by AT&T. There's our fan photo of the day. At Gala 59. Infield is drawn in. Molina has scored a run. That was in the second inning. He has singled, he has doubled, and also the intentional walk back in the fourth. Infield is drawn in with a 9-4 St. Louis lead. 
Slowly hit to the left side. And Olide is out at first, but they pick up the run to make it 10 to 4, St. Louis. Ninth RBI for Yadier. The adjustment comes in on the swinging bunt, drops it initially, but stays with the play and throws out Molina. Holiday scoring his second run. With two outs, it's Alan Craig. Came up with the bases loaded, struck out on a 3 2 fastball back in the fourth. Single to right. That was in the second inning, and he's also grounded out to short. As you well know, Al, it's it's a game of, of failure and how you deal with it. Trying to correct what you're doing at the plate, but then mentally going through the grind of a long major league season. Frustrations continue for Alan Craig. Beautiful afternoon here at Bush, 10-4 St. Louis. And it's a frustrating time for them because Matt Latos has been scratched from a rehab assignment. Chapman return, that is a, a plus for them. He's going to throw a bullpen on Monday. You're talking about Roldis Chapman after taking that line drive off the face. And then Vado Oppo. We bring that up because he had an opposite field home run yesterday. And the talk around the Reds was that he wasn't driving the ball to the opposite way coming off a couple of knee surgeries but that's big for them to get him hitting the opposite way and not just going that way but hitting with some authority and some power. Well you think about the former National League MVP. You know. Matt Carpenter had more RBIs than Votto did. Cardinal leadoff hitter had more RBIs than what Votto hit right in the middle of that big potent offense should be driving in runs but they seem at times was more content to walk than to swing the bat. Oh and two on John Baker. I saw where Latos was going to have a, an MRI on his forearm. So apparently that he may have aggravated it right. It was a bullpen that he was throwing last night that was scratched and the reason why he made a couple of pitches had tenderness in his elbow. So he has been officially shut down. No word on when he'd give it another shot. And this is a player that has given them at least 209 innings the last two years. Nasty stuff when he's right. That may be the story of the Red season this year injuries. They started this year with eight players on the disabled list. It's tough, but you know, you're talking about. Former number one draft uh, starter in Latos, your closer Chapman, your two setup men. 
Sean Marshall and Broxton. Mesoraco, their starting catcher. I mean, it's it's tough to overcome those injuries, but they can get them back. It, you know, there's plenty of time to recover. Yankees, Brian McCann, couple of home runs. They beat Boston seven to four. Here's a two-two. Fly ball lifted out to left. Holiday going back and makes the catch on the run. Outstanding play right there. And the real key was Matt got a jump on that ball, started chasing it down, and at the last second he reached up with the arm. If you reach up too soon, you slow your forward progress. But he reached up at the last second and just snared that line drive. Nice play by Matt Holiday. That ball slicing. From a left hand hitter is going to come back to him. You get run the chance of overrunning it. And there you see reaching up at the last second and hauling it in. Matt Holiday is a uh, converted third baseman. Originally drafted as a third baseman. But the main reason he was drafted is because he could flat out hit. Here's Russet. With one out, puts the ball in play, hits it to short, Descalso. Couple of steps to his right, two down. Tomorrow on the Toyota Cardinals Live pregame show, Jim Hayes takes a trip into the replay setup right here at Bush Stadium. It'll be interesting to watch. Replay that is set up for both teams here at Bush Stadium. And see that tomorrow, 12.30, Toyota Cardinals Live in our pregame show. Today, Jim had Cardinals owner Bill DeWitt on. Never know who will pop on the pregame. Junior Lake. Wainwright, by the way, is due up third. He's at 97 pitches. You get the impression this would be it for him. Randy showed his throwing in the Cardinal bullpen. One pitch. And easy to tell it's Randy when he drops down side on. Here's the O2. Hundred pitches for Wainwright. Only bump in the road for the most part was in that fourth inning. Twenty-six pitches. And they scored once. The curveball and a strikeout of Junior Lake. And Wainwright finishes his afternoon with eight Ks.
and it's 10 to 4 in favor of the Cardinals. Let's check in with Jim Hayes. And uh, Jim, this offense has come alive with 12 hits. Yeah, they're alive, Dan. But I was asking Mike Matheny before the game how you try to help the guys who you know are going to hit but are off to slow starts, guys like Alan Craig and Johnny Peralta. Mike told me he's talked to John Mabry and David Bell about it. Mike says he thinks you help them by let them make the necessary adjustments. Don't let them overwork. But he says most of all you want to be encouraging. Matheny says guys like Craig and Peralta will hit. But Dan he says you want to keep them positive. He says that's the main thing. You don't want them overthinking it. Alec Craig here today is one for four. I'm sure frustrated with the strikeout with the bases loaded as John Jay pops it up to the left side. We showed you the numbers for Jay against this lefty. Very good and he picked up a two out RBI single after that strikeout of Craig in the fourth. That was with the bases loaded. That scored two. There is that fine line of overworking. We see it an awful lot. I think a lot of today's players are guilty of that, trying to go to the batting cage and just work, 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 and you know, you're trying to control your muscles, you're trying to build muscle memory. And if you just keep on swinging the bat, eventually you tire out and pick up bad habits. Hit to short, and John Jay is the first out. Cardinals half of the seven. But today's player, it's not, they're not afraid to work. And Russin has given the Cubs exactly what they needed, which was innings. He has saved their bullpen here today. That was the purpose to come out here. And Finish this ball game. If they lose it, so be it. You know, but to save the bullpen, that was the purpose why they brought him up today. Daniel Descalso with two hits today. RBI single that was in the second inning, and then a double to right center. Here's a grounder, a little chopper towards second. Darwin Barney, two away. Afternoon is through for Adam Wainwright. We'll see a pinch hitter. That'll bring in Shane Robinson and Wainwright today. Seven innings, four runs, seven hits as he strikes out eight Cubs. Ball at a strike. Russet came in as Robinson singles to left center. And that's the Cardinals' first pinch hit of the year. They were 0 for 10 prior to the Robinson's first uh, pinch hit this year. Look at the uh, Fox tracks brought to you by Plaza Tire Service. But Russet came in with runners at first and third. Nobody out back in the fourth inning. He got Adams to pop out the intention to walk of Molina, struck out Craig, and then it was Jay with the RBI base hit. But those two runs were charged to Villanueva. Robinson had 16 pinch hits last year. Strike to Carpenter. He didn't like that call. Two hit day for Matt. A pair of RBIs and a run scored. Here is talk about the uh, Budweiser bash and where you pick up the autographs. Well, here at uh, Bush Stadium, that's the Ford Plaza just behind center field, the Coke Pavilion. All kinds of places to go here at Bush Stadium. You can find something to do, I guarantee it. Now, with Ballpark Village, even more. 
options for families. Carpenter a fly ball out to left and Junior Lake is there. Chicago time for a Bomberito sports update over at Ballpark Village in our studios with Pat Paris. Pat. All right, thank you, Pat. Looking forward to the uh, post game show. Randy Choate. Into the ball game. This will be just his fifth appearance of the year. The Cardinals, now we've seen more and more feel comfortable in the fact that they could use him against right handed hitters. And uh, Derek Lilliquist was telling me on the road trip that they feel that Choate, while, yes, label is lefty specialist, they're comfortable with him facing right handers. Not all the time, but most of the time, they're fine with it. And, and that's just how his role has evolved. You know, he was the specialist when he was signed, but now they've seen his stuff and they feel it's good enough to get the right handed batters out there. And he's been used probably through more complete innings last year than he probably had in the probably the last five or six years. Probably ask him to do that right now. Nobody warming up, so they're going to ask him to go ahead and get uh, these right handed batters, and Bolt will be the, the first one. So he'll pitch hit for Luis Valbuena. The first pitch is taken for a ball. Randy Choate in relief of Adam Wainwright. Seven innings, eight strikeouts. Got a base hit last night in a pinch hit rule. Cubs, by the way, their pinch hitters are three for 21. They had two pinch hits of those three last night. And Old is played in every game now for Chicago. Hit a couple of home runs, both coming off of Wandy Rodriguez of Pittsburgh. He was acquired from Texas in the Matt Garza deal. And they, a lot of power. Hit five home runs this spring. Talked about how last year was kind of a wasted year in winter ball. He had developed vision problems and carried over through the season. And it's a leadoff walk. Old friend Pat Hughes is calling the play by play for the Cubs. Their radio side and. Rod Coomer is the new analyst for Cubs radio but Pat. Who is there on the left. Has put together CDs. And one is of the great Jack Buck. There's another one on Harry Carey. Just came out with one on Mel Allen. But the list goes on and on. You love baseball. You love hearing great highlights. 
is to head to his collection. It's baseballvoices.com. Baseballvoices.com. And for those of the uh, CDs of the living announcers, uh, there's interviews, great after dinner speeches from Jack Buck that were recorded that Pat was able to dig up. It's baseballvoices.com. Really neat stuff. I'd want to get just to hear those, you know, the master ceremony speeches and some of his jokes, the best ever. He had Bob Uecker from his Hall of Fame speech and then did an interview with Bob, but those two were partners in Milwaukee for a number of years, radio side for the Brewers. Rizzo with a high fly ball, Holiday. One away. Main is thrown in the Cardinal bullpen behind show. And this is the kind of game to get these guys in, get them work, try to stay sharp, which has been tough to do, I'm sure, for especially Butler and to an extent Manus, who was used so much last year. So you can't just go to the same guys all the time. When you do have the luxury of having a six run lead, you have to take advantage of it and Share some innings with the bullpen. One out runner at first, Nate Sheerholtz. Jason Mott continues to make progress, but it's still going to be a while. It would be May, I would assume, at the very earliest that Jason Mott would come up here. So there could be times where you're going to need to use Butler and Manus. I think Shoat is. One of the reliable ones that Mike Matheny has confidence in, and Nishak is moving up that ladder. Good slider. In order to have that good slider, like you just saw, you have to be out there and out. This slider, perfect placement. A late movement, too. Late movement, you know, starts in the strike zone and then hitter commits and then breaks away from. Him. And Sheerholds is swinging a miss. That slider again. First strikeout for Randy Choate. Sheerholds has had a heck of a series with six hits here in the first two games. Four last night. Pair of doubles today. Ryan Sweeney will dig in. It's just a really even better slider than the one before because it was well off the plate. He has no chance to hitting that. But it Alt is the runner at first. Sweeney RBI double to right center. Back in the sixth inning. Alt visits quickly with first base coach Eric Hitsky, one of the new faces for the Chicago Cubs and their coaching staff. Hitsky was in uniform and was a, a top pitch hitter a year ago and originally drafted. By the Cubs out of the University of Arkansas in 1998, but never played for the Cubs, bounced around and had a very good major league career. One ball, one strike. One and two. Billy Miller. St. Louis and the Smet product, as well as Missouri State, former batting champion with the Red Sox. He is on the staff for Rick Renteria. Six new coaches Hensky, Brandon Hyde is a bench coach, Gary Jones, a third base coach, Billy Miller, Mike Brumley, and also a quality assurance coach, Jose Castro. He provides great insurance. The offseason.
St. Louis, 4-7-1 for the Cubbies. Being a wave of pitching into the fourth, the starter for Chicago. Knocked around with ten hits, nine earned. Nate Sheerholtz, another big day. Couple of uh, doubles, two for four. Adam Wainwright, seven innings, seven hits, the eight strikeouts, and Matt Carpenter. A two-hit day. Cosman is going to get played appearance here. Pete celebrating his 26th birthday yesterday. Kind of the forgotten man is Cosma, but he was good enough to play in 27 postseason games the last two years. That's the most by any major league shortstop. Russian took over in the fourth inning. It's still in this game. We're now in the eighth, and it's 10 4 St. Louis. Cosmo with a fly ball out to right. Sunday, April 27th, Louisville Slugger is honoring Yadier Molina and Matt Carpenter for their batting titles in 2013 for their respective positions. It's a tribute to their accomplishment, all kids 15 and younger. Entering with a ticket, take home their very own Silver Slugger mini bat. And Dylan Wolf. It's his birthday today. He's watching on Fox Sports Midwest and his favorite player is Yadier Molina. So happy birthday to Dylan Wolf, who is taking it all in. Here's Matt Holiday. No relation, but Randy Wolf has just been signed by the Arizona Diamondbacks as they deal with injuries in their rotation and bullpen. Randy was out with Tommy John surgery. Did go to camp with Seattle and was released, but uh, Holiday hits a ground ball to third. Low throw, two away. That's Mike Alt. Pinch hit, stays in, play third base with that throw. He's been nursing a sore shoulder, didn't really show up there. And it's Matt Adams who is one for four with a home run. Seen all the Tommy John surgeries this year. Amazing, isn't it? These 13 major league pitchers. There was only, I think there was a total of 18 or 19 all last year. And 2012 was kind of the high point with 36. Ground ball, Rizzo slides and leads Russin. And Adams is the third and final out. In the bottom of the eighth.
Cardinals turn it over to right-hander Seth Manus. Matt Carpenter is our BJC Healthcare difference maker. Two for five, pair of singles, couple of RBIs. The crowd today of 45,302. Four, five, three, zero, two. How about what the guys at Memphis have been doing? Now, I don't know if you were catching up with Tavares and Gritchick and Piscotti, but that trio off to a great start. Oscar was three for four, three RBIs last night. A couple of home runs, eight RBIs. This is Starlin Castro. Gritchick has seven RBIs. And tied with Piscotti, the team lead in hits with 12. And Piscotti is hitting 364, so that three putting up big numbers early on. And I mean, that's good news. One time, you know, we kind of wondered where the outfielder is going to be, and then all of a sudden this spring, Piscotti was as good as advertised. Tavares, you know, has been the number one prospect in the minor leagues. You know, he's getting healthy again. And then Gritchick, who was in the David Freeze trade, he and Borges came over. Gritchick was the number one draft pick for the Angels the year that they drafted Mike Trout, number two. The 2 1 is pulled down that third base line by Starlin Castro. And this will be a double. That's five doubles hit by Chicago today. This copyrighted telecast is presented by the authority of the St. Louis Cardinals. May not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals. The shot there, that home run of Matt Adams to tie it up, and the Cardinals did not look back. It was a four run bottom of the second, five run fourth, and added another in the sixth. Manis, who was so good at getting ground ball double plays a year ago. On a hop to second, taken there by Descalso, who shifted over to second. And I guess the one thing you could say is he's getting ground balls here today. Castro's just happened to find a hole and get down in the corner for a double. If he would have been a single, that would have been another double play. He led all National League relievers in double plays a year ago with 16. Here's John Baker. Twice is grounded out to second. And then a very good play by Matt Holiday to start at the top of the seventh. Running catch in left. Seth Roy really just had trouble getting his sinker down. Elevated a little bit and it hit line drives. Tony Cruz is the new catcher. One one. Liner and caught. Cosmo stayed in the game and short. And there's two down. Cardinals baseball is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminds fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. And by four, the official cars and trucks of the St. Louis Cardinals. The Cubs are down to their final out. Ryan Kalish. Be the pinch hitter with two outs and a runner in third. You know that Manus would love to end this game by not allowing a run to score and keep his ERA going the right direction. And Get a ground ball out. Somebody has escaped. People with white jackets are chasing that guy. <laughs> one ball, one strike.
close this one out and set up the rubber game tomorrow with another big crowd. Two and two. The Cubbies down to their final strike. This season and more indicative of the offense we think we're going to get on a daily basis. Congratulations, Wainwright. He picked up win number 101, goes into a tie in 10th place in the Cardinals' all time win list. He struck out eight today. Our Budweiser player of the game, Adam Wainwright. Cardinals right hander, just over 100 pitches, picks up the win. He's now two and one. The Cardinals are six and five overall. So on to the post game show, Missouri Lottery Cardinals Live. Pat Paris, record standing by. Cardinals sliding on into a win.